Hey guys, I've been playing Ghost of Tsushima, which is turning out to be a really fun and incredible looking game, so here's some tips that you might find useful. Here's a neat little trick that I haven't seen anywhere else. You can use the wind chimes as a sort of makeshift listening mode with greatly extended range. Just hold L2 from a good vantage point and move your aim around the area that you want to survey. This will highlight which enemy is going to react to your chime, so you can quickly pick off the position of every single enemy around the camp by doing this. You can even use this to cheat your way out of some of the bonus requirements like clearing a certain number of enemies without using focus listening. Alright, now let's talk about stances. This is the absolute key to killing enemies as fast as possible, since you can deal more damage and stagger enemies much, much faster by using the appropriate stance against them, so make sure you're switching stances every single time you target a different type of enemy. And if you need help remembering which button to press for each stance, then the symbol on the PlayStation controller can help you out. The water stance, which is the one you need to use against shield users, is mapped to the circle button because, you know, it looks like a shield. You can think of the X button as the two swords from the dual yielding swordsmen, so you can use that stance against them. And the triangle looks like the tip of a spear, which means, of course, it's for using against spearmen. Lastly, the square is for heavies or brutes because, you know, they're big and uh, squarish. The second tip I have in regards to combat is that you should focus on the deflection skill tree early on. Mastering the combat in this game means mastering the parry mechanics, but you can't parry the unblockable attacks that have a red flash to them. So spend your first technique points on the deflection tree to turn those unblockable attacks from the spearmen and swordsmen into flashing blue attacks that you can parry but not block. Parrying is pretty easy to pull off since the window for executing them is very generous, unless you're trying to go for a perfect parry, which requires much more precision. They will also leave the enemy wide open for a counterattack, making you much more effective in combat. Overall, the parry is one of the best moves you have in the entire game, so use it often. Even if you've mastered the parry and stance change, combat can get very messy if you get surrounded by different types of enemies. So any ability that targets multiple enemies is an absolute must. Kunai's will allow you to stagger two enemies before upgrading them, while sticky bombs can pretty much destroy entire groups of enemies if they're bunched up together. So unlock them as soon as you can, unless you're focusing on stealth and want to unlock the distraction tools first. You won't really need too much help with stealth for the first like 10 hours of the game, so you can always get them later. I would also recommend upgrading the Sticky Bomb as early as possible to make you immune to its blast. This will allow you to use it more sparingly without having to worry about someone exploding beside you. The Black Powder Bomb can seem like a more powerful alternative to the Sticky Bomb, but you have to hold L2 to aim them during combat, which makes them trickier to use in a pinch, especially since you probably want to have your L2 ready with your bow in most cases. If you want to get strong fast, then focus on doing the Mythic Quests. Mythic Quests will grant new armor sets, weapons and special attacks, which are absolutely devastating. You'll pick these quests up from musicians scattered around Tsushima, and you'll also get a fair amount of technique points from completing them, which will go a long way towards making you more powerful. Among the first Mythic Quests that you pick up, is one that will grant you an unblockable attack called Heavenly Strike. This is an extremely fast and powerful strike that consumes one resolve and is just super useful against the tougher enemies. Just wait for them to launch an unblockable attack and counter it by doing your own Heavenly Strike. It will cancel their attack and do massive amounts of damage, though it will do even more damage if the enemy is staggered. It can also make enemies nearby cower in terror, which sets them up for a quick kill. As soon as you feel comfortable with the combat and the stealth mechanics, clear as many strongholds, outposts or whatever you want to call them. Clearing them yields several different rewards. First of all, they will reveal a large chunk of the surrounding area, which will help you find new side activities. 
They will also have large amounts of resources to pick up like iron, steel and supplies that you can then use to upgrade your weapons and armor. And lastly, all of them have a leader which you have to defeat. Killing these leaders will help you unlock each of the different combat stances that I mentioned earlier. Some outposts will also have the bonus objective of studying the moves of the leaders, which will yield another point towards the stance unlocking. And if you do all the bonus objectives, you'll get even more experience from the entire thing, which means you unlock more skill points once the outpost is liberated. Before doing these outposts though, make sure that you have the charm of Inari equipped. You can get it from the Arrow Peak Shrine, which you can find south of the Golden Temple. Golden Temple is a location that you'll reach by doing some of the early story missions, so there's little chance to miss it. This charm will increase the amount of resources that you get from pretty much everything that you pick up in the game. And the difference, though seemingly variable, is pretty significant, like something around 20-30%, sometimes even more. You might want to remember to switch this charm to something more useful for larger combat sections, but if you're not finding the combat too difficult, just have this equipped all the time. The Traveler Clothes allow you to reveal more of the map as you traverse, which will in turn reveal more campsites and question marks which lead to different locations like Fox Dance or Hot Springs. While out on the world, you'll often stumble upon combat encounters, but you can switch back to a more combat-oriented set of armor literally whenever you want, so do that if you want some extra protection. I don't find the combat to be too hard, especially outside of specific locations and missions, so I just use the Traveler set whenever I'm traveling or doing basic side quests. In almost every encounter, you have the chance of starting off with a standoff, which gives you an essentially free shot at killing an enemy and a guarantee of looking extremely cool while doing it. You can upgrade it to be able to take on more enemies in a chain of samurai slaughtering, but it's one technique point for one additional enemy, but then two for another one after that, and two skill points for getting one more free kill per combat encounter seems like a lot to me, especially when you have still a bunch of other stuff to upgrade. Now this is a personal choice, like basically everything in this guide, because of course the standoffs are super cool and all of that, but yeah, I would hold off and upgrade a bunch of different stuff before upgrading this. And lastly, a really quick one that had me scratching my head for several hours. If you want to sheath your sword, swipe to the right on the trackpad. I don't know if the game tells you this or not, but I certainly didn't notice and I had to look it up. And if you get tired of the animation and you just want to put your sword away as fast as possible, then just tap L2 once you get the bow. That will do like a cancel animation and you'll be ready to go. Alright guys, that will be all for now. If you have any other tips that you'd like to share, please leave them down in the comment section. Ghost of Tsushima is turning out to be an awesome game, so I hope you're enjoying it. And if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and check out the channel for more content that you might be into. And as always, thanks for watching and I hope I will catch you in the next one.